Welcome to Social Allo Ministries. My task and purpose is to glorify God and expose the devil. I recently uploaded some videos and someone commented on a video and the person asked some questions that rather than answering individually, I felt the need to actually do a video with a recorded response. And this is actually constitute a part of the Prophetic Academy. Basically you asked, and I'm going to answer. I won't call the person out by name. It's not really necessary. But I pray that you will watch this video and that you'll get the answers to the questions that you asked. It's about a paragraph long, so I'll just go by. And there are several questions, so I'll try to answer the questions individually. And it starts off, do prophets help to deliver or convert those who are seeking repentance? So again, do prophets help to deliver or convert those who are seeking repentance? The answer is yes. For example, John the Baptist, he preached a message of repentance. He baptized people to help bring them into the kingdom. So prophets do help to deliver or convert people. But also make that as a general statement because prophets have different callings. The Lord has different assignments for prophets. So it just depends on the prophet's assignments. But they can help to deliver people who are seeking repentance. The self-proclaimed prophets I've encountered only seem to inquire about the past dig 15 to 20 years in the past to come up with messages of condemnations over past sins. Although salvation is between each individual and God, I wonder what role prophets play in bringing souls to the kingdom. That was long and I'll break this down. First, the person said, the self-proclaimed prophets. This is not a rebuke, but whenever a person says self-proclaimed prophets, that raises a red flag for me. And it could be two ways, either with a person or those self-proclaimed prophets. Ephesians 5.11, or correction 4.11, speaks of the five ministry gifts. And it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. When a person said that he or she, he or she is a pastor, people don't usually question it. They, they don't ask a person to provide a ordination certificate. Person says pastor, no issues. But if a person said he or she's a prophet, it's like whoa, self-proclaimed. That's the that's the attitude that a lot of people have. But if they go to a doctor, they don't necessarily want to see the person's transcripts. They probably want to research which medical school the person went to. Same thing for a lawyer. They don't ask questions like, did you pass the bar? It's like, there's no other person a lawyer. But when a person says that he or she is a prophet or an apostle, then a lot of people, they started, start having doubts. In a matter of being um, self-proclaimed, the prophet Jeremiah, he was accused of being a self-professed prophet. That's where he was accused of making himself a prophet. But we know, starting Jeremiah 1, that the Lord actually called him. I'll leave that alone for now. So it says, the self-proclaimed prophets I've encountered only seem to inquire about the past. Yes, the Lord may show a prophet, and I say may, may show a prophet things about the past. And there are things in a person's past that can cause problems that they, in a sense, need to go back and address. And it says, dig 50 to 20 years in the past to come up Another red flag. If a prophet is digging into the past 
to come up with things? No. I continue. Come up with messages of condemnations over past sins. I'll focus on that. Condemnations. Romans 8 1. Now there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So a message of condemnation, that is not how the Lord works. Over past sins. So the condemnation part. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus if you're walking after the spirit as opposed to the flesh. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. He likes to bring up things from the past. Now, over past sins, has a person repented of those sins? If a person has repented of those sins, and by repenting, it truly means turning away. For example, the Bible speaks about him who stole, let him steal no more. So if, you're, if a person sinned in the past and a person's turned away from that kind of sin and doesn't do it anymore, then that sin has been forgiven. The Lord will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. He will forget about our sins. Past sins is covered by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses all sin and unrighteousness. So the Lord isn't going to bring up things from the past to bring condemnation. The other part of that is, sometimes people mistake conviction for condemnation. Jesus said he was going to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit performs several functions to include convict us of our sins, righteousness, and judgment, and to show us things to come. So the Holy Spirit does convict or try to convict us of our sins. It's the devil who brings condemnation, but we have to know the difference. We have to know the difference. And it continues. <clears throat> Although salvation is between each individual and God, I wonder what role prophets play in bringing souls to the kingdom. And as you, will, as you may have noticed, I'm going back to the Bible regarding answering these questions. So what roles do um, prophets play in bringing souls to the kingdom? This could be a long answer. And not to say, for example, that King Nebuchadnezzar ever got saved. But Daniel was an advisor to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king had become full of pride. He was a ruler of an empire. In Daniel chapter 4, Daniel warned him to keep his pride in check. The king did not obey the warning, and he ended up falling, and he ended up living like a beast for a season. But then he acknowledged that the God that Daniel served was a true and the living God, and because he acknowledged God, the Lord restored him. So whether or not he lived out the rest of his life honoring God, but at least Daniel was in a position to show him the way to help bring him into the kingdom. In fact, um, Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belteshazzar, his mother told him that Daniel was a man of God. So even though um, Daniel had served in his father's court, Belteshazzar had to find out about Daniel via his mother who told him that basically Daniel had the spirit of God. So Daniel was in a position to help bring Belteshazzar into the kingdom, but that, was in the, that didn't work for him because he ended up dying. Daniel, this is just heavily in Daniel, Daniel in Daniel chapter 6, when the men basically lured King Darius to sign a decree about anyone worshipping God, about being cast into the lion's den. Daniel was in the lion's den. Because of the way the Lord preserved Daniel, that helped to point Darius to Daniel's God. So those are examples of prophets bringing, or a prophet 
helping to bring souls into the kingdom. In um, 1 Kings 18, Elijah was on Mount Carmel and he was pointing people back to God, asking them how long will he waver between two opinions? If Baal be God, serve him. If Yahweh be God, then serve him. So he was pointing people back to the true and living God. And kind of points back or harkens back to how um, Joshua said, on this day, choose whom you will serve. Basically, choose which God they're going to serve. And then John the Baptist, he came out of willingness preaching a message of repentance, baptizing people. And then when he was the one who pointed out Jesus as being the Lamb of God. So the thing about self-proclaimed prophets, there are two types of prophets. Prophets of the Lord or prophets of the devil. A prophet of the Lord should point a person or people to the Lord. Elijah preceded John the Baptist. In Luke 1, when Gabriel prophesied to um, Zechariah that the Lord is going to bless him with a son, John the Baptist, he mentioned about him coming in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elijah pointed people to God. John the Baptist pointed people to God. And more specifically, he pointed people to Jesus once Jesus made his, made his appearance. So those are ways that prophets help to bring souls into the kingdom. And the next question, <clears throat> pointing out sin and warning people of consequences is great, but in what way are prophets called to help people overcome? So again, pointing out sin and warning of the consequences is great, but in what way are prophets called to help people overcome? One of the ways is by pointing out the sin. When I mentioned about the fivefold ministry earlier in the course of Ephesians 4.11, a lot of people use the hand to symbolize apostles, prophets, evangelists. The index finger, the prophet, so it's like pointing. So yes, the Lord will use prophets to point things out. But prophets aren't just about pointing out bad things. Sometimes they point out good things. So pointing out a warning people of the consequences of sin is great. That is one of the ways to help people overcome. When you know the consequences of something, like the Bible tells us, the wages of sin is death, that is a way to say, you do not want that. You truly don't. But I mentioned earlier, prophets point people to God. And specifically, they point people to Jesus because He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. Through Jesus. So when a prophet is pointing people to Jesus, they're helping them to overcome. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He points us to Jesus. And a part of overcoming there are times when a prophet will deliver a message to someone and this may sound controversial but a person may be in a sinful environment the person may be engaging in sin and the Lord may actually have the prophet deliver a message to that person and this, it is conditional basically that the per if the person repents that the Lord will bless the individual because it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, or at least it's supposed to. And sometimes even by just delivering a message such as that, it brings conviction to say, you know what, I'm doing this, it is not pleasing to the Lord, so I need to stop. Some prophets have a, for example, a strong anointing to cast out devils. Some people are doing th sinful things because of demonic activity in their lives. And that's one way the Lord may use a prophet to help people overcome, by administering deliverance. 
prophets also preach. That's one way of helping people overcome. Prophets provide godly counsel. That's another way prophets help people overcome. So it's not always about pointing out bad things. The Lord may or may not show bad things about a person to a prophet. Oh, ooh. Prophets pray. Prophets pray. Moses was a prophet when he was on Mount Sinai with um, the Lord. And the rest of the Israelites were worshiping the golden idol. And the Lord's anger waxed hot and he wanted to destroy the Israelites and raise up a nation out of Moses. Moses interceded for the people. But then he went down and dealt with them. Now, when he went back and dealt with them, 3,000 of those Israelites got killed. So there are many ways that a prophet can help people overcome. Because it is one thing to point out sin. It's another thing to help people. It's another thing to help people. Prophets also help people overcome by demonstrating the characteristics of Christ. In John 8, when the Pharisees brought the woman who had been caught committing adultery, Jesus found a way of escape for her and told her to go and sin no more. Jesus, God in flesh, the Word made flesh, He showed the love of the Father to that woman. Prophets can also do the same thing, which is why a prophet may know of sinful activity a person is engaging in. And a prophet may pray for the individual privately, may pray for the individual publicly, or simply provide godly counsel. There are times in the Bible that people went to prophets seeking advice. For example, people went to Deborah seeking godly advice. People went to Huldah seeking godly advice. People went to Samuel seeking godly advice. It continues. Do they pray for or with the people God send into their paths? As stated before, the answer is yes. Prophets pray. Intercession is one of the, one of the key and overlooked functions of a prophet. The first person the Bible ever refers to as being a prophet is in Genesis 20, verse 7. The Lord told Abimelech, who had taken Sarah into his harem, to return Abraham's wife. And that if he didn't, he's as good as a dead man. I've done teachings about the reason why the Lord said that. But he said that Abraham was his prophet and that he would pray for him. If Abraham didn't pray for him, he would have been a dead man. So Abraham interceded for Abimelech. I mentioned about Moses. He interceded. I spoke about Samuel earlier. Samuel told Saul at least twice that the Lord had taken his kingdom from him. That wasn't a very good message, at least not for Saul. That had taken his kingdom away from him and had sought a man after his own heart. In 1 Samuel 15, when Saul reached for Saul's garment, or Samuel's garment, and the garment tore, and Saul said, the Lord had taken the kingdom from you, I'm paraphrasing, taken the kingdom from you and given it to one basically better than you, a man after his own heart. He gave him that, you could say, harsh message. But then you look in 1 Samuel 16, it starts off with Samuel up all night lamenting over King Saul. There are some prophets, whether you want to call them self-proclaimed or not, there are some prophets who they love to give out messages of rebuke, but I used to be in the military, and I've been to several leadership schools. And for example, at a platoon level, say a platoon has a platoon, well, say a platoon leader or a platoon sergeant, and it has four squads, we say eight people each. This is in a school environment. And when they rotate leadership position, someone comes from outside of the squad and stands up front as being a leader. There are some people where it was noticeable that when they were in the platoon as a follower, 
that they were very different from when they were being a leader. Some people got, you could say, drunk on power. And not that they were abusive, but you could tell that they were just totally different. Some cases, they may have been unruly in the, in the formation. But when they were up front, they were very um, seemingly into discipline and they wanted to discipline everyone else. And it's like, hold up. When you're with us standing in a formation, you're always talking and all this stuff and now you're up front. So some people, they truly cannot handle a lot of authority, a lot of power. And that's part of the reason our Lord processes them. So some people, when put in a leadership position, they will abuse it. And some prophets, they love to give rebukes. And for me, if I see someone, whether a person claiming to be a prophet or not, a minister, and a person is just always giving harsh messages, and never truly communicating the love of God, I'll turn away from that person. And if that person cannot handle criticism, and I mean valid criticism, I tend to turn away from the person, which is an option that you all have. So do they pray for people? Samuel delivered a harsh message on more than one occasion, but we see in private he was praying for Saul. It was the Lord who said, How long will you um, lament over him since I have rejected him? And then he told him to go anoint David as Saul's replacement. So a prophet should have the heart of the Lord, where they can deliver harsh messages, but usually it's either after deep intercession, where they may be lamenting, saying, Lord, please have mercy before delivering a message. Now, how the prophet delivers a message doesn't necessarily mean that they're enjoying delivering that message. There are times when the prophet may deliver a message because the Lord may not give them information beforehand, and afterwards, they'll go into session. Like Jonah. Jonah delivered a message. Hmm, wow, I forgot about this earlier. Thank you, Lord. Jonah had delivered a message to the Ninevites, and he was not very enthusiastic about it. He didn't go to Nineveh and said, Thus said the Lord, in 40 days the city will be destroyed. He just went and basically said, In 40 days the city will be destroyed. He didn't even use the Lord's name. But well, the people recognized it and they repented. Jonah set up camp outside the city, waiting for its destruction. And he was angry with the Lord because the Lord relented of the decision. But as a result of Jonah's preaching, 120,000 people were saved. Maybe they didn't come to the Lord, but at least they recognized that by humbling themselves before the Lord, that the city was saved. So that's part of how prophets can get people into the kingdom by preaching a message. And that message was one of destruction. It may have seemed like condemnation, but it brought conviction, and they repented, and the Lord relented. Now in the book of Nahum, we see how the Lord did destroy the city of Nineveh. So I have to be careful about backsliding. Speaking about backsliding, oftentimes prophets are assigned inside of churches. And yes, they'll point out things because they do not want people to backslide. Paul wrote that there would be a great falling away. And sometimes the Lord has prophets to help prevent the falling away. But it will come down to a personal relationship with Christ. So yes, prophets do pray for people, or at least they should. And there are times when the Lord will reveal something to a prophet about people, and all they're going to do is pray. That's it. In what way can prophets help others grow in Christ and follow the gospel? In what way can prophets help others grow in Christ and follow the gospel? As I mentioned earlier, prophets preach. Or they can. Pointing out wrongdoing is one way. There are times when the Lord reveals things to a prophet 
which is a warning. I mentioned Daniel 4 earlier. Daniel gave Nebuchadnezzar a warning. Do not let your pride get to a certain level or else you're going to be taken down. And like the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, when Daniel, when the Lord used Daniel to interpret that dream, where the tree was cut down, but a stump was left, Nebuchadnezzar was a king who would get cut down. So in interpreting that dream, which is, some prophets are anointed to do that, in interpreting that dream, it was helping Nebuchadnezzar, giving him a warning regarding things to come. Can prophets help grow and follow the gospel? And the key thing is the word. Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The m word out of the mouth of God. Some people say that pro a prophet is a mouthpiece. They'll say for God, but I'll say a God, because prophets again, they're prophets of the Lord, prophets of the devil. So a prophet will proclaim things from the Lord. That can help people grow. Sometimes a prophet, prophecy will give direction. That can help people grow. Sometimes people are downtrodden. And the Lord give a prophet a message of hope. That will help people grow. And if a prophecy is predictive and it comes to pass, that will help people grow in their faith because they'll know that the Lord has spoken it and then he did it even though and many prophets have experienced this where they've given someone a message from the Lord the message came to pass and the person forgot that the Lord had spoken to them about it let's see is conversion a job for evangelists only. And are prophets only messengers who point out wrongdoings? I'll answer that. I mentioned John the Baptist with conversion, so John the Baptist was a prophet. But even with that, and there's this term about not putting someone in a box. For example, Paul, as an apostle, they mentioned about him baptizing people. And he mentioned that there were few people that he baptized. With Jesus, they had mentioned to John about Jesus baptizing people. But it said that Jesus baptized no one. His apostles baptized people with water. There is a baptism from Jesus. With fire and the Holy Spirit. So... Conversion is not only a job for evangelists, but evangelists are the ones who usually go out and draw those people in. For example, and with all the positions I mentioned in um, Ephesians 4.11, where the Lord gave some apostles, some prophets, etc. Now Jesus, he was and is the apostle. He is the sent one from the Father. He is the prophet. So an apostle should be mon or modeling ministry after Jesus. Prophets, likewise, Jesus is the evangelist. He came with the good news. He is the good news. An example of the evangelistic aspects is how... Um, in the man at Gadarenes that Jesus cast the devils out of. And for example, evangelists will do that. Cast devils out of people. After Jesus cast the devils, the legion of demons, out of the man at Gadarenes, he wanted to follow Jesus. But the Lord told him to go tell people what he did. And he went to the Decapolis and he became an evangelist telling people about Jesus. Likewise, John 4, the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus spoke to her. And what I mentioned earlier about self-proclaimed prophets, Jesus, there were times when he proclaimed that he was Messiah. When he was speaking with the Samaritan woman, she mentioned about waiting on the Messiah, and Jesus said, I am he. 
But the woman didn't say, oh, you're a self-proclaimed Messiah. No, she believed that he was. And then she left her water pot, went to her village, and she told the villagers about Jesus. That was the function of an evangelist. She went out to go tell people about Jesus. And then Jesus spent two days with them. And then they said, now we believe, not because of the things that you, the Samaritan woman, had said, but because they heard from Jesus themselves. In the book Raising the Wilderness, Rogue Reformers Rallying the Remnant, I was inspired to coin the term sheepdogs for prophets. Now we know in Luke 15, where the Lord mentioned about a shepherd having a hundred sheep and how he leave the ninety-nine to go get the one lost sheep. The other times the Lord will send a prophet to go get that one lost person. So a prophet cannot, for example, just be confined to a church. The prophet has to be obedient to the Lord. And a lot of things take place outside the church, away from the public eye. Prophets, I mentioned this before, they do not just point out wrongdoings. But a part of being a prophet is the Lord takes them through a process. And it causes them to hate sin. Prophets should hate sin. Prophets should love what God loves and hate what God hates. God does not love sin. But it's not always about pointing out wrongdoings. It has to be balanced. And by balanced, I don't mean that 50% of messages has to be about wrongdoings and 50% has to be about no. But a prophet should not simply be focused on bad things, but good things. The gospel is the good news. Prophets also help to spread the good news. So it can't always... Can't always... Um, be bad. In 1 Kings 11, the prophet Ahijah encountered Jeroboam. Now Jeroboam became a wicked king, but the prophet Ahijah had an overgarment. He tore, took it off, tore it in 12 pieces, and gave 10 to Jeroboam to let him know that he was going to be king over Israel. That's when the nation of Israel is going to be split into two. The northern nation of Israel and then Judah. That was good news. So it's not always about bad news. And the last question. Wow. 30 minutes into this. And this is part of the reason why I was inspired to do a video as opposed to a typed response. Where do people go Hmm. Where do people go? Who should they turn to if they want to break the cycle, repent, and follow Jesus? I say that again. Where do people go? Who should they turn to if they want to break the cycle, repent, and follow Christ? Jesus is the door to the Father. We do not have to go to a minister in order to come to Jesus. The Lord mentioned about basically humbling ourselves as little children and coming to Him. In Ephesians 4, it speaks about those five ministry gifts. And it also continues by stating the reasons for those gifts, for the perfecting of the saints. And the saints, we're not perfect yet. But we can all come to Jesus. Like evangelists. A famous one is um, Billy Graham. But a lot of people coming to faith because of him. I know people have things to say about Billy Graham, but that's not what this is about. I'm just using him as an example of an evangelist. But there are people who have come to faith who have never had an experience with a minister. I've heard about people, for example, 
having a dream or a vision of Jesus. And because of that, they came to faith. One person I can think of used to practice witchcraft. I think she ended up going to a church and she said something, I hope it's like, isn't about Jesus or God or whatsoever. And something about like closing her eyes. And when she closed her eyes, she had a vision of Jesus. And even though she was a witch, and the Bible says, the Lord said in the Bible, suffer not a witch to live. And we know that witchcraft will get people sent to hell. She saw Jesus and she felt so much love that she repented. Again, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. So she repented. So we all have the ability to turn to the Lord for ourselves. Isaiah. The Lord told him to go tell King Hezekiah, get your house in order because you will die. Isaiah delivered that message. But then King Hezekiah, he didn't speak to Isaiah. He turned to the Lord and mentioned about all the things that he had done. And because he repented to the Lord, the Lord spoke to Isaiah who had left and told him to go and tell King Hezekiah that he had extended his life by 15 years. That also illustrates what I mean, a balanced approach. So one moment, Hezekiah, or Isaiah was telling the king, you're going to die. Not a message a person wants to hear. The next moment, he's telling him that the Lord has granted you 15 years. That's balanced. A prophet has to be able to deliver what you call bad news, and a prophet also has to be able to deliver good news. Joseph, when he was in prison, he told the baker, in three days you're going to die. Because that was the word of the Lord. But he told the cupbearer, in three days the Pharaoh is going to reinstate you. And it happened. So a prophet has to be able to deliver what some people call bad news or good news. So when it comes about who people to go to to break the cycle. The first answer is Jesus. He's the one who died for us. There was a division where people were saying that they followed Apollos and they followed Paul. And he was like, is Christ divided? And he mentioned that he or Apollos neither died for them. Christ did now, we can go to the Lord, and the Lord may point us to a minister, or the Lord may bring a minister to us. Could be a prophet, could be someone else. And there are times when you have those private prayers, and then someone comes and speaks to you, and whether the person is a minister or not, the person comes and speaks to you, and you know it's the Lord using that person to give you an answer. So we have the ability to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Also, as a part of that personal relationship, we can ask the Lord, Lord, is that minister of you? And wait for his response. Because he will confirm who belongs to him, who is serving him or not. That concludes the questions. And this concludes the answers. God bless you.